Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the mechanism for the nucleophilic substitution reaction between a halogen allophane and hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions need to be aqueous uh, in aqueous solution for nucleophilic substitution reaction. Don't forget that hydroxide ions that are ethanolic, in other words, dissolved in ethanol, will not react via a nucleophilic substitution mechanism. Instead, the hydroxide ion will react as a base and you'll get an elimination reaction. Anyway, if we just look at the generic mechanism for this nucleophilic substitution reaction, halogenoalkanes contain a polar carbon halogen bond. And that is very important because the halogen is more electronegative than carbon, it pulls the pair of electrons in the covalent bond towards it, therefore creating this polar bond with the halogen is delta negative and the carbon is delta positive. This is now our site of attack for our nucleophile. Our nucleophile, in this case the hydroxide ion, has a lone pair of electrons like all nucleophiles have and a full partial negative charge. In this case, the hydroxide ion is negatively charged. That pair of electrons will be attracted and form a bond to the delta positive carbon of the halogenoalkane. As this bond is forming, the pair of electrons in this covalent bond between the halogen and the carbon will both move, one, two, onto the halogen. Following those arrows through, you then have your hydroxide is now bonded to the carbon. The uh, Whatever those other three things were, here, here and here will still be bonded to that carbon and the halogen has been kicked out, booted out from the halogen halogenoalkane as a halide ion. You can draw the lone pair on there if you wish to show that those are the two electrons that have uh, been transferred onto this halide ion, however they are not necessary. What is necessary in the mechanism lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of the hydroxide ion with an arrow from the curly arrow from the lone pair towards the delta positive carbon. Per, uh, the pair of electrons in this carbon halogen bond we also need this arrow showing that these two electrons from that covalent bond are being transferred onto that halogen atom. So the arrow starts on the bond and goes to the atom. If we do an example, um, what about chloromethane? If I use the same colours, so chloromethane reacting with aqueous hydroxide ions. The pair of electrons, this lone pair, will form a bond to the delta positive carbon. Now I should, in my mechanism, show that this is delta positive, which is why the nucleophile attacks it. While this pair of electrons is forming this new bond, the pair of electrons in the carbon-chlorine bond move on to the chlorine, forming my product. The carbon is still bonded to three hydrogens. It now is bonded to the oxygen of the hydroxide to form this alcohol. And you've kicked out a chloride ion. I should have drawn that in brown, but I can't actually see the difference between these two pens very easily. So there's the chloride ion. If you wanted to write this as an equation, you have got chloromethane reacting with your hydroxide ions which are aqueous so this is all an aqueous solution to give you your alcohol and your chloride if you wanted to put your 
group one metal um, spectator ion as well, then yes, you could have sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride or potassium hydroxide and potassium chloride, but it is up to you. And if we just want to name these, this is chloromethane. And your alcohol that's been produced is 